This is Rapao, and today in Dux Lewitor, we're talking to Felix Groschagner from Bora Hanskoa about La Vuelta a España. It's Monday, September 2, and it's the first rest day of La Vuelta a España. On the line, we've got a rider who's doing his Grand Tour for the first time in Spain. It's Felix Groschagner of Bora Hanskoa. Welcome, Felix. Thanks for coming on. Um, how does it feel that first rest day? Good rest days are always good in the big tours, and yeah, it was pretty hard racing now for nine days. So, yeah, as I said, I'm looking forward for some rest now. And what is the rest day uh, entertainment uh, next to just sleeping and laying <laughs> on the bed? Ah, uh, we did a small one-hour ride and uh, a coffee stop, and yeah, some. I have a little bit back pain, so some extra treatments and yeah, Netflix and a little bit uh, yeah, call my girlfriend and family and some friends and yeah, then the day is already over. Short, it's a short day. <laughs> what were you watching on Netflix? Ah, uh, now uh, in the moment uh, I was watching a movie like Tweens with Arnold Schwarzenegger because oh a classic yeah yes yes uh best english accent it's so sympathetic so <laughs> i really <laughs> really like to watch these movies but i also really like to watch uh some episodes in the moment i'm watching family guy so it's funny <laughs> good entertainment yeah. and then uh also in a good spanish tradition maybe time for a little nap later on in the afternoon for a siesta Exactly. We arrived pretty late yesterday in the hotel, so I will do a small nap uh, in the afternoon. <laughs> and uh, you mentioned uh, that you've got maybe a little more aching in your back. Uh, has that been holding you back the first week of this Vuelta? Yeah, normally I don't have problems, but I have a little bit seat sore, soreness. Yeah, And then you start to move always and your muscles, uh, they become stiff. And so I have a little bit of uh, back problems, but uh, we, have, uh, good, we have good physios here and for sure they, they will resolve the problem. Because uh, I was looking at your results like this for Welt, and it almost seemed like you were sort of like growing into it and getting sort of like better each day is going by your results. <laughs> Yeah, I'm here to support uh, Rafa and Sam for the sprints and uh, yeah, uh, I will try to to focus on the stage and yeah, but now uh, we were losing two riders so now it's even more important to stay close to the leaders and support them. So we will see what the next uh, 10 days will bring. How How's the mood in the team so far? Already got that stage win obviously with Sam. Uh, Micah is in the top 10. Yeah, it's uh, really good, uh, but it's always really good. And uh, I think that's really important to be successful, that you have a good mood in the team and that everybody is enjoying to spend also the time together because yeah, we stay a lot of time in the room together and also in the bus racing and uh, sport is also really emotional. So, yeah, it's important to have a good mood. And who is your roommate, this Vuelta? Uh, normally it was uh, Gregor Mühlberger, my Austrian mate. But uh, yeah, he went out from the Vuelta. So now I'm in the room with Shempi Drucker and from Luxembourg. So it's funny with him as well. And you can, uh, can you play some FIFA with him as well? Because I've heard you were, you're quite keen on playing some FIFA every now and then on the computer. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, now we don't have the PlayStation here, but normally I really love to play FIFA. <laughs> but uh, uh, Rafa, Micah, he told something. Maybe we can organize a PlayStation for rest day, but I don't know what uh, if it's true or if it was just uh, speaking. <laughs> <laughs> maybe for the maybe for the second rest day, you gotta survive another week first. But babe, better we don't have FIFA because uh, <laughs> this um, friends can be enemy when, <laughs> when you play FIFA. <laughs> Are there any other riders who are pretty good at FIFA or are you the best of the Bora team? Uh, I don't know, to be honest. Uh, I, I didn't play it so much in the team, but uh, in my old team, in GTG, I had one Italian teammate, Simone Ponzi, who was also really good. And uh, yeah, also one Austrian rider, Marco Halla, he's, phew, I think he's one of the best of, in the peloton in FIFA. Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
So looking ahead for the, for the next week, uh, obviously those first nine days have been pretty brutal. Um, what do you expect for the, for the next week? Yeah, as you said, for sure it's, uh, again, hard. Uh, but uh, yeah, also a good chances for breakaway in the, in the middle hilly stages. So uh, I will get my chance there and I will try something. And yeah, for the climbing stages, it's really important uh, to, to support Rafa to uh, yeah, improve in the GC and yeah, we will see. Do you reckon you can still sort of combine it, supporting Rafa and at the same time trying to uh, trying to go for a stage win yourself? Because I think it was one of the main goals for you going into this field and maybe to see if you can get that stage win. Sure, I, I had a pretty good spring, so I was hoping to, to or I'm ho- still hoping to win a stage here, but uh, it's always hard to win a race uh, there are 170 riders and everybody is really strong and you need to be also a little bit uh, lucky. But uh, I will give everything and when it's not happened, it's not happened. It's sport, so it doesn't matter. So. Talking about winning a stage, you had your first uh, win this year in the Tour of Turkey and then immediately won the GC as well. Uh, what was that feeling like crossing the line first in Turkey in at stage five? Good, good. It's always... Uh, nice to win races uh, and it was uh, i think the last race i will have won was uh three years ago so four years ago so uh it was really a good feeling and uh, i hope it will i can win uh, more races in the future was it a coincidence that in turkey you won in the cold and in the snow being yeah. austrian <laughs> i like uh to be honest yeah i like uh i mean i uh, I prefer to ride in 25 degrees and sun, but my body likes to to ride in uh, cold weather. And yeah, it's for sure good. And as an Austrian, you are more used to it maybe than some Spanish riders or uh, Italian riders. <laughs> Is that what uh, all the ski touring helped you with? Being used uh, yeah. to the cold? <laughs> maybe, yeah. But I was used to ski a lot when I was younger and... Uh, there is uh, there there you have a lot of time like minus 25 minus 30 degrees so yeah i think my body still uh, uh is used to it a little bit so how did you go from from the skiing when you were younger to being a cyclist uh i was in a ski school the primary school it was a ski school and uh i i had an injury i broke my leg and then i start cycling a little bit just like for recovery and uh, I really liked it and uh, yeah close to my hometown there's also one cycling club and uh, they they asked me if I want to join them for some days of training and I really liked the atmosphere and uh, everybody was you know skiing is more like a so it's a single single player sport and uh, cycling is a team sport and so it was really cool to train with somebody and I was sharing the same passion and yes yeah, slowly I really start to like it and then I told to my parents uh, I would like to stop skiing and start cycling and yeah then step by step when was then the first time that you realized that oh, I'm actually pretty good at cycling and maybe I can become a professional <laughs> Uh, I always dreamed about uh, being uh, to become professional, but uh, yeah, it's you. You slowly start growing into it. You you start racing like with the national team, and then in uh, under twenty three, you you do the first good results, and then some people ask you uh, if you want, or some also some coaches from some teams ask you if you want to do a test test for them, and yeah, slowly, like I said, you you are going into it, and it's it's going really fast. Like uh, you are watching, I don't know, the best riders in television, and suddenly two three years later, you are riding with them. It's really cool. And now you're maybe getting to a point you can actually win those races as well. Um, <laughs> how, how do you see that development? Uh, where, do, where does it go from here? Yeah, uh, uh, I start pretty late, I think 15 years, 16, 16 years. And I never trained really much. In first year under 23, I had like 11,000 kilometers or 12,000 kilometers. So it's really not uh, much. And uh, 
yeah, then uh, in the second, third year, I start to train uh, like in the proper way and or for me the proper way. And then you you yeah you become professional and you do the big races and this helps you also a lot to improve uh, to improve. And um, yeah, for me, Bora is a really great team. Uh, we have uh, good coaches. We have uh, yeah, great support from the team in everything, and uh, they really uh, give you also that uh, time to develop. And uh, the most important thing is they believe in me. So I think, uh, yeah, sure, it would be nice to win uh, some big races in the future. But uh, yeah, it's step by step, and we will see. Like you were maybe when you were young, like you said, you were dreaming of becoming a professional. Are you now sort of like dreaming of winning certain races? Or do you have like a special dream race? Yeah, I really, really love to race one week races. Uh, my favorite race is Paris and Bardis would be incredible to, to win uh, one day. But uh, yeah, sure, you're dreaming about Tour de France and this, but uh, uh, it would be nice to win uh, one stage in the Tour one time. And uh, yeah, I think this is possible, and we will see. And you mentioned Paris Nice. You already was uh, fifth on the final stage this year, so you're getting close to at least getting a stage win there. So step yeah. by step, you're getting there. Yeah, last year I was also top ten in the GC and wearing the white jersey. And uh, yeah, we will see. Uh, it's a really good race, and uh, also the first days you uh, you have everything in the race. You have crosswind, you have a time to hill. Uh, hard stage and hilly stages so it really it's really cool race and i don't know i just like it you mentioned the time trial there's a time trial coming up tomorrow usually you're a you're pretty good time trialist um do you get an opportunity to go full gas tomorrow or you're gonna hold back a little bit i think if i want to if i want if if i tell to the team i want to go full just for train it uh i can but uh I don't feel so good, so I think uh, I also spoke already with the team. It's good to take it as a uh, yeah second rest day. You still need to to pull hard so that you can make the time cut, and yeah, I will uh, use it as a second rest day and try to recover a little bit from the last days to be to add to that I can focus really on the next stages. Yeah. All right, uh, we're moving to the Tux Turbo Talk fan question of the week. Each week, uh, people on the internet sending their questions in. And we've got a question coming in from Gore Loic, and he wanted to know, what do you like most of the Bora team? Ah, phew. <laughs> there are many nice things in the team. Uh, but uh, most I like... Uh, hmm. Yeah, the atmosphere in the team. It's uh, really good and... Uh, I don't know. It's uh, yeah, for me, it's a really, really good atmosphere. It's uh, you know, when you are at home and you're on the way to races, you're really looking forward to race again with the team, and uh, yeah, that's amazing. And I saw you guys are using the hashtag Band of Brothers. Yeah, um, is that something you've been watch- watching on Netflix as well, Band of Brothers already? No, I have never seen it. Uh, <laughs> I, I even didn't know that that uh, is already a movie or. Uh, or something but uh yeah i need to watch it <laughs> <laughs> all right but it, it, like you said a band of brothers is what you're using it feels like a uh, like a big team one big team of brothers um and you also got a little austrian group yeah sort of at Bora with conrad mulberger Posselberger. um is that a coincidence yeah and i, I know them really especially with gregor i was also in primary school secondary school so we did like everything together we also rooming together in the internet and uh, it's uh yeah we know us since we are i think six or seven years old and uh we both were skiing and also lucas i know then from when i start cycling because he's close to my home t- he lives close to my hometown and also patrick i know already pretty long so it's not only like teammates so we are really good friends and uh, we spend the most time together in our uh younger years so it's cool to really live the dream and race together in uh, in the biggest races of the world and maybe race together for austria in yorkshire as well is that on your agenda 
Yeah, uh, I will do the road race, and so it should do also Gregor, Patrick, and Luke. So, yeah, it's on our calendar. All right, awesome. Well, I want to thank you for your time on this uh, rest day, and we're going to leave you to it. You can go to your siesta. Yeah, <laughs> perfect. <laughs> thank you. So, so thanks for your time. Uh, everyone, thanks for listening. Don't forget to leave a rating and a review and make sure you subscribe to the Talk Still Talk podcast uh, wherever you get your podcast so you can automatically receive a new episode each week. This was Rob Bauer with Felix Roosjartner of Bora Hanskoen. Stay tuned for a new Talk Still Talks next week.